Hello friends, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will learn about COBOL table processing. So this is the agenda. We have table declaration, then we have 1D table, then 2D table, subscript, index, and then we have set statement and search statement. So we'll start with table declaration. So arrays in COBOL are known as tables. An array is a linear data structure and is a collection of individual data items of same type. Data items of a table are internally sorted. Table is declared in data division and occur, occurs clause is used to define a table. Then it can be used only with level number starting from 0 to 49 and do not use occur clause with redefines. So we'll start with 1D table. So what exactly is a table? Suppose you want to store data in table format. Then we use uh, tables. We declare we have 1D tables, we have 2D tables. So what exactly will happen? The data will be stored in the same variable, but its occurrences will be the number of time we give the occurs clause. So here we will see this. In a one dimensional table, occurs clause is used only once in declaration because it's a 1D table. Then WS table is the group table item which contains the table. So here you can see this is a table, WS table, it's a group table. Inside this we have WS A occurs 10 times. So this value of A will be stored like 10 times. There will be 10 occurrences. Next we have 2D table, a two dimensional table is created with both data elements being variable length. So here for reference go through the syntax and then try to analyze the table. So you can see this is our table, it's a 2D table, first we have declared WSA occurs 10 times. So this is our first element, then we have WSB picture of A, then we have WSC that occurs 5 times at 10th level and then in 15th level we have WSD pick X of 6. So the first array WSA, this one. It can occur from 1 to 10 times and the inner array WSC it can occur from 1 to 5 times. Like for each entry of WSA there will be a corresponding 5 entries of WSC. So the data will be stored like WSA first entry then 5 entries of WSC and then further the next entry of WSA and then further 5 entries of WSC. Then we have subscript. So how to access the data of an array? we must we have two options one is index one is subscript so subscript it's a table individual elements can be access, accessed by using subscript subscript values can range from one to the number of times the table occurs you do not need to declare this it is declared automatically and it does not and it is automatically created with the occurs clause so you can simply mention like that in in this suppose if you want to um, see the second occurrence so you need to write WSA after that bracket will start then you need to write 2 so it will give you the second occurrence of this one WSA then we have index so table elements can also be accessed using index but index requires a declaration also index is a displacement of element from the start of the table and index is declared with occurs clause using index by here you can see WSA pick A of 10 occurs 10 times index by I so here we have indexed it by i. The value of index can be changed using set statement and perform varying option. In the next slide we will see the set statement. So set statement is used to change the value of index. Set verb is used to initialize, increment or decrement the index value. It is used with search and search all to locate the elements in a table. So these are the some of the examples how to use the set statement. Here set i, j to positive number. In this situation, i and j, they both will be set to the number which we will mention here. Set i to j, here the value which is present in j will be, will come in i. Similarly, set i to 5 in this, the value of i will be 5. Set i, j up by 1 in this, i and j both will be by up by 1. Similarly, set j down by 5. So in this situation, the value of j will be down by 5. It means uh, the value of j minus 5. Next we have search and search all. So search is a linear search method which is used to find elements inside a table. It can be performed on sorted as well as unsorted table. Now next we have search all. Search all is a binary search method which is used to find elements inside the table. So table must be sorted order for search all option. Now let's see all these functions practically. We will start with table declaration. I have coded one module. In that module, first I have declared 1D table, then I have declared a 2D table, 
and then I have I will show like how to fetch the records in one and two D tables and what is the difference. Do a reset. It is declared in data division under working storage section. The first one is WS one D. This is the first table and it is a one D table because it has only one occurs clause. So what does it mean? WS character it is of size two bytes and it will occur five times. So WS one D will be of ten bytes. Similarly, I have declared a two D table here. Here what I've done is the first one, first element will occur three times and under each occurrence of WS first there will be two occurrences of WS second. So it's a structure like I will explain so uh, we'll take this example here when we'll see WSA is of one character this is under WS first so under A we have further two two more characters they comes under the second D it, it's the second dimension so here you can see WSB of pick X and it is occurring two times so it will work like A 1 2 this is one complete set of WS first then B 3 4 is the complete set of second occurrence and C 5 6 is the data which is present in the third occurrence so it is divided into three parts and if you further talk about WS second so how it will work is under WS first we will have two occurrences of WS second so on the second occurrence of WS first we will have again two occurrences of WS second so this is in a table like structure it will be more clear when we will execute this program and we will see the results here I have just mentioned the move statement first of all I'm moving data I'm moving in the 1D array I'm moving A A B B C C D D E E because it is of two characters two bytes so in the first occurrence it will have A A in the second occurrence it will have B B then C C D D and E E here what I'm doing is I'm then displaying the data present in the each of the occurrence 1 2 3 4 5 and we are displaying WS character here I'm using subscript method so we'll first discuss about what is subscri uh, subscript in the uh, next program we'll see what is index table individual elements can be accessed by using subscript uh, subscript subscript values can range from 1 to the number of times the table occurs and subscript can be any positive number and we do not declare it it is automatically created with occurs clause so we haven't declared anything and we, we just started counting it from 1 to 5 because 5th is we have uh, it is occurring 5 times that's the reason th this is the last occurrence similarly for 2d array I have declared I have moved data into the 2d WS 2d and then we are displaying first of all we are displaying the first occurrence what is there in the first occurrence and then we are displaying what is there in the first occurrence and what are the elements present under first occurrence so we have 1 comma 1 then 1 comma 2 similarly for second occurrence 2 comma 1 2 comma 2 third occurrence 3 then under third occurrence 3 comma 1 3 comma 2 so we will first compile this program then we will submit it go back we need to write m open the compile module we are doing it for table not table 2 change the name submit it by the time we will open the execution we will open the JCL where we are going to provide the name here you can see max 4 there must be some warning messages as of now we will ignore, ignore them so now we will submit the JCL and now we will check the results in spool 
I'm opening the module simultaneously just to check what it is printing. Open spool from here. I misspelled it. This is our job which we just submitted. We'll go to spool and check the results. First of all, we'll see what is present there in one dimensional table. Here in the first entry, as we have discussed, it's AA, in the second entry, BB third one CC, fourth DD, fifth EE. So we'll check the program. Here as you can see we have displayed all the occurrences of WS character. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and we have moved this value AA, BB, CC, DD, EE. So these are the values which are present in 1D table. Now we'll start with 2D table. Here the first occurrence will have the first three characters. You can see one character of this occurrence first one and then further one character of second occurrence but it is occurring two times so we can say for the first occurrence it will be of three bytes one plus two times of this so two plus one three bytes if you calculate the total size then it will be uh, two three nine bytes first we are displaying what what is there in the first occurrence then we'll be displaying inside the first occurrence what is there in the first and the second occurrence 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 2 here you can see a12 is the first occurrence then in 1 and 1 we have 1 and in 1 comma 2 we have 2 similarly for th uh, second occurrence b34 and what is there in 2 comma 1 3 and 2 comma 2 we have 4 similarly for the third one also now we'll see how to use index this is this we have done using subscript we have displayed in 2d and 1d array using subscript method now we'll use index method unlike subscript you need to define index while declaring the table so first of all, we'll see what is an index. Table elements can also be accessed using index. An index is a displacement of element from the start of the table. An index is declared with occurs clause using indexed by clause. Here you can see indexed by clause. The value of index can be changed using set statement and we can use perform varying loop also. So we'll see how to use it. Here I have declared a 2D array. In the first WS1, it's same only. We are using the same data, same table structure, but this time we'll be doing it by index. You need to do from you need to first declare the index, index by i. For the second element, we have declared it using j, index by j. Ignore this one. We'll discuss about this in a while. W search. Then I have moved data to WS2D table. This is 2D table. Then what I'm doing here is I'm performing a para varying i from 1 by 1 until i is greater than 3. So it will go to the a para and it will display WS first and the i. So here the value of i will start from 1 and it will go till 3. And when the condition will be successful, this will come out of the loop. So it will be displaying WS first first. So then it will perform the second paragraph. Perform B para varying J from 1 by 1 until J is greater than 2. So because we have defined it two times. Here you can see in B paragraph, we are just displaying the second I of J. This is similar to the previous one. In the previous one, we have given the values of subscript here we are using it perform varying and then this is the search para using search statement you can search any character inside the array search is a linear search method which is used to find elements inside the table 
It can be performed on sorted as well as unsorted table. It is used only for tables declared by index phrase. It starts with the initial value of index. If the search element is not found, then index is automatically incremented by 1 and it continues till the end of the table. And this is the syntax of search1. Here we are searching WS first. WS first is the table. And if at end it will display letter C not found if it is not found. And here we have mentioned the condition WSAI. WSA is this. And I will be incremented one by one. And it will search what is present there in WS search. So here we have declared WS search and we have given value C. So in this table it will found C at this position. When this condition will be met, WSA of I, I will be some value here. And when it, when it will match this condition, it will display letter C found. And then it will end search and it will come out of the loop. So we will execute this program now. We need to compile it first. I will change the program name. So I'm doing C all P table to P table two. So it has changed the program. We'll submit this. By the time it executes, we'll open the JCL to execute the program table two, and we'll make the changes in that JCL. So max is e4. It is successful. Here this time we'll be executing P table two. Do a submit. I'm going back, it is maxis0, I'm going back to the COBOL library, we'll check it simultaneously, the spool, output and the program. This is spool. Here as we have discussed it will first perform first paragraph and it is displaying here WS first I so WS first I is A12 like the first occurrence A12 then it will be displaying the second occurrence I comma J here the value of I is 1 J is 1 and the element is here 1 when the value of I is 1 J is 2 because it is it will execute till the value of j is equal to 2 once it gets greater than 2 it will come out of this loop and it will again go back to the initial perform statement here this time the value will be incremented to 2 and again it will start executing so then it will display the value of ws first in brackets it will come as 2 and for 2 it will again go in loop for 2 times so this is what is happening here a 1 2 1 2 then in the second time a34 then it is displaying 3 and 4 then C56 then it is displaying 5 and 6 and this is the result of this uh, search para after that it came out from this loop then what we did is using set statement we have changed the value of i and j to 1 and then we have performed C search para in this para it is then performing the search and as letter C is there that's the reason it is print it is saying letter C found now what we'll do is we'll change here we'll write here Z and we'll check what it will return the search para so we'll repeat the same procedure this time it should say correct note found you know we can submit it from outside as well I know what I have written in this max is 4 I will submit this JCL we are executing program in this F9 so success check the output it should be letter C not found in the table
so this is all about table processing in the next video we'll discuss about string handling